This video is part two of my top 30 favourite films of all time. If you have not yet seen part one, click here to do so. Done that, brilliant, let's get started. Number 20. Duck Soup. Thanks to my father, I've been a massive Marx Brothers fan for most of my life. The Marx Brothers are a comedy group consisting of four real-life brothers who were most popular during the 30s and 40s for their many comedy films made by Paramount and MGM. While I enjoy all of their films, their earlier work with Paramount stands head and shoulders above their later work, and of their Paramount films, their masterpiece is Duck Soup, a political satire. The story is suitably ridiculous and at times non-existent, but like all the films of the Marx Brothers, it's just a backdrop to allow the brothers to do what they do best. Verbal comedy, physical comedy, musical comedy, and surrealist comedy, and often combinations of all four. Duck Soup is a great introduction to the Marx Brothers while simultaneously being their best work. It's one of my favourite comedies, and it's still as funny as ever. Never mind that stuff, take a card. Card? What'll I do with the card? You can keep it, I've got 51 left. Number 19. Once. A film about music and the special way it brings people together, once is a heartwarming and charming experience. With very few named characters, unknown actors, many of which had never acted before, and an incredibly low budget, once still has more to say about people and music than most other films with bigger budgets and more ambitious stories. An unnamed male musician is working as a busker on the streets of Dublin and catches the attention of a female musician who appreciates his talent. The film in its entirety focuses on their interaction with each other and their effect on each other's lives. It's impossible to talk about once without talking about its soundtrack and the the film contains more than 12 original songs, most played in their entirety, and amongst soundtracks of this kind, it's one of the best. They are woven into the narrative of the film and are completely unobtrusive, and I've intentionally refrained from referring to Once as a musical for this reason. The music exists within the story, the realism isn't broken by characters inexplicably knowing dance moves and lyrics, and every piece of music has an identifiable source. Once is one amazing feat, and I cannot praise the film enough for doing so much with so little. So you want to come over Monday night? I'm going to pick up some power drills, liberate my cabinets. Are you even listening to me? <laughs> Five friends travel to a remote cabin in the woods for a weekend of fun and mischief. That night, stuff happens. It sounds like the plot of about a hundred other horror films and you'd be right to think so. However, director Drew Goddard and co-writer Joss Whedon aren't the kind of creative minds to put out something mediocre and pedestrian that we've seen a hundred times before, and the very fact I consider this one of my all-time favourite films should be evidence enough that this isn't your traditional run-of-the-mill Evil Dead-esque horror. There's something else going on, and even though it's been three years since the film came out, I'm still not going to spoil it for you. What I will say is that The Cabin in the Woods is one of the most unashamed shamedly fun experiences I've ever had watching a film. It works as a comedy, a horror, a deconstruction of genre and storytelling techniques, but what I love best is the film is actually one giant metaphor. It's worth seeing for fans of horror and fans of filmmaking and storytelling in general. It's easily the best thing Joss Whedon has ever worked on and it has changed the way I look at cinema. Number 17. Moon. Moon is one of a few films on this list where to say almost anything about it would ruin it considerably. I'm even having to be very, very selective about which clips I show you to avoid you inferring or noticing anything that might give you an idea about what Moon is about. The first directorial effort from Duncan Jones, Moon stars Sam Rockwell as Sam, an astronaut who is reaching the end of a three-year solo shift monitoring a harvesting station for the alternative fuel, Helium-3, located on the Moon. That's honestly all I really want to say about it. Moon is a film everyone should see with no knowledge of what's about to transpire. The intricacies of its story, performance by Sam Rockwell, and wonderful atmosphere are all reasons why Moon is one of my favourite films, but the specifics of why must remain unsaid. Safe to say, if you've seen Moon, you know exactly what I'm talking about and why I'm being so hesitant. Number 16. Trance. Danny Boyle is my favourite director, so Trance is the first, but most certainly not the last of his films to feature on this list. A twisted, dark, clever, and gripping neo-noir psychological thriller, Trance is a deceptively simple setup that lays the foundations for a many-layered and complex plot. James McAvoy plays Simon Newton, an art auctioneer who assists in the theft of a painting from the auction house he works in. During the theft, he takes a severe blow to the head, which lands him in hospital with amnesia. When gang leader and theft orchestrator Frank, played by Vincent Castle, discovers that Simon has misplaced the painting, 
painting and is unable to remember where, Frank forces Simon to partake in hypnosis therapy in the hopes that it will recover his memory and allow them to find the painting. That's just the setup, and where the film goes from there is best left unspoiled. Much like Moon, to discuss the reasons I love Trance so much would ruin the film. Trance is an accomplished and confident work that takes us into the very darkest recesses of the human mind. Number 15. Primer. Odds are you won't have heard of this one. Primer is a $7,000 independent film that follows two scientists who accidentally discover that time travel is possible. The film's aim was to be as scientifically accurate with its explanation of time travel and the mechanics of how it works as possible, despite the science itself still being made up. The film is wordy, dense, and narratively bizarre, but its tonal consistency and attention to detail allows it to flourish. To sum it up in one sentence, the film is a work of genius. It demands your attention, but rewards it at the same time. Primer may not be a film for for everyone, but it's undoubtedly a film for me. Number 14. The Hunchback of Notre Dame. To this day, The Hunchback of Notre Dame is my favourite Disney musical. From its rousing musical numbers to its exploration of some extremely dark themes, Hunchback is one of Disney's most adult animations. By 1996, 2D animation technology had gotten to an incredibly sophisticated level and Hunchback showcases this brilliantly. Every single frame of this film is beautiful. The film also does what all of the best musicals should do, which is allow the music to tell the story and explain how the characters are feeling. Hellfire I consider the gold standard for villain songs and The Bells of Notre Dame is musical genius on screen and sung expertly by Paul Candle who plays Clopin. I can just never shake the sheer size and power of this film. The Hunchback of Notre Dame will always be a favourite. Number 13. Back to the Future. What can I say that hasn't already been said about Back to the Future? It's somehow unquestionably a product of the 80s, but at the same time completely timeless. Marty McFly, played by Michael J. Fox, accidentally travels back in time from 1985 to 1955 and inadvertently stops his parents from ever getting together. He has to put history back on track and work out how to get home. The film has a little bit of everything. It's got sci-fi, romance, comedy, action, and it all culminates in one of the most perfect amalgamations of genres. I can't praise Back to the Future highly enough. Number 12. Toy Story. The first 3D animation film ever made remains to this day my favourite animated film. If you haven't seen Toy Story, you just owe it to yourself to check it out. I'm not even saying this because it's one of my favourite films, it's just a wonderful piece of cinema history. I grew up watching Toy Story, and even as I've grown older and new animated features have come and gone, my appreciation and love for Toy Story hasn't wavered. The idea of toys coming to life wasn't a new one, even for the time, but the way that Pixar puts an entirely new and original spin on the idea is what makes Toy Story so special. It's almost surprising that the animation holds up as as well as it does, with the exception of the animation on the few human characters, as the rest shows very little age. Toy Story is imaginative, it takes me back to my childhood, and its influence on my life is still felt even today. Number 11. About Time. To this day, About Time is the biggest surprise of my entire film watching career. I'm a huge fan of the work of Richard Curtis from Blackadder to Love Actually, so I was optimistic that his latest film would be in a similar vein to his previous work, but not necessarily a groundbreaking and life-changing experience. Immediately after seeing the film, back in 2013, I was ready to declare it Richard Curtis's masterpiece, the best film of 2013, and one of my favourite films of all time. Domhnall Gleeson plays Tim Lake, who was told by his father that the males in the family have the ability to travel in time. However, sci-fi film Film, this isn't. There's a very brief explanation about how to travel in time, but the film is far more concerned about what this ability allows Tim to do than it is with how exactly he does it. The reason the film works so well is the writing and the strength of the cast. The characters are an absolute joy to be around. I want to get to know these people, I want to be friends with them. About Time is at times hilarious, at times incredibly moving, and one of the most brilliant and perfect films I've had the pleasure of seeing. Thus concludes films 20 to 11. If you want to see films 30 to 21, click below. If you want to see films 10 to 1, click my face.